Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and today we're going to make kimchi salami. That's right, so stay tuned and get ready for something crazy. Okay, let's get started. Now, we are making salami, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you're going to know that there's some very basic steps to making salami. Now, first and foremost, I'm preparing my Mold 600. This is the Penicillium nalgiovensis. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but you're going to usually use about a gram for every uh, 16 tablespoons or, or one cup of water. Uh, today, I'm going to be making about 40 or 50 pounds of different salami, so I'm going to use quite a bit of Penicillium nalgiovensis, but you want to prepare it about 12 hours before you use it. Once you do that, you just put a top on it, let it sit overnight, and uh, by the next morning you're ready and it's, um, it's nice and live and ready to go. Let's add some seasonings, all right? This is where you get to give your salami some character. And, and truthfully, you know, if you've made salami, you're going to know that the steps are almost identical for every salami. The grind may change, the percentage of fat, maybe you use beef, maybe you use pork or a combination, but their seasonings is what gives your salami that unique and independent um, flavor. And so what we're doing here is we are, as, as best we can, trying to give this salami the elements of a kimchi and so we're going to obviously use our salt cure but kimchi has a spice called gochugaru which is a korean chili flake it also sometimes has shrimp paste and and fish sauce it also has ginger and onion and garlic it, it has a, a a spicy fermented chili called gochujang and so what we want to do is we want to add all of those elements to this particular salami below I'm going to have the recipe posted and you know what feel free to adjust any of the seasonings the only thing I wouldn't really adjust would be the cure and the salt um, but it, you know if you have experience making salami have fun with it if you want to make it spicier then definitely you might want to add uh, a spicier version of the gochugaru in, in my case the gochugaru is not very spicy it's a, a little more smoky and so I didn't want a, a overwhelmingly spicy and overwhelmingly funky salami so what I did was I kind of toned back the fish and the shrimp and the gochugaru as well as the gochujang, but uh, most of those you can, you can increase and, and decrease as you see fit. The idea after making a salami is that you want to maintain the, the flavor of the pork as well. So you don't want to add so much of your ingredients that you, you lose the, the essence of, of the pork, uh, which in this case really comes through. Notice that my dry ingredients are to the right. I'm done with that. And right now I'm mixing my wet ingredients. So that right there is a giant bucket of gochujang. That's got fish sauce in it as well as shrimp paste in it. And so that's just going to get mixed up and then added, uh, added separately uh, to the mince when I'm about to mix it all up. Okay, now that your seasonings are ready, let's get the starter culture set up. And the starter culture we're using today is FLC. FLC is a starter culture that uh, ferments a little faster. Uh, you're going to get fast acidification. It's a faster ferment. It's going to impart some tanginess if you get it down below 5.0. And today we're going to ferment at 80 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. And we're going to try to achieve a 4.8 um, pH. So that's what we're, we're what we're shooting for. You want to you want to get this set up so that it rehydrates, and and you really you don't need it to rehydrate for too long maximum 15 to 30 minutes. So you're going to prepare this just before you're going to grind your meat. Now you're going to see here in a second I've already got my meat prepared. I've got my fat and my lean already separated and I'm just going to set this to the side. So my fat and lean has already been cut and chopped and diced and ready for the grinder. And what I, All I'm going to do is I'm just going to incorporate it together. I'm going to mix it up a little bit so that when I grind it I get a real nice even grind and my fat is dispersed evenly. Now remember, you're going to want to make sure this is chilled. You do not want to grind this at room temperature. You want to grind this uh, below 40 degrees. So try to get it to 36, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what I'm working with right here. This has been chilled uh, roughly about 30 minutes, 45 minutes did the trick. It's nice and cold and we're going to go ahead and start grinding it. Now if you have a KitchenAid grinder, you want to work in small batches, but um, 
if you have a, a, a grinder with a, a bigger motor, you can knock it out pretty quick, a couple minutes, and you got this whole thing locked down. The thing you want to make sure is that it's chilled so that your fat doesn't smear, all right? That's the one thing you, you want to make sure you, you watch out for. Also, if you're... If you didn't trim it properly, you're going to have a lot of sinew and whatnot coming through, and it's going to cause your meat to to grind unevenly. So just check to make sure your meat's coming out in nice ribbons. Should look like spaghetti, you know, when you're when you're grinding it up. And now we're going to mix it. All right. So this is where you get to either use your hands or a mixer or a KitchenAid stand mixer. All of them work. Just make sure your meat is cold. Make sure your equipment's cold. And um, that way you don't uh, you don't warm it up. If you're using your hands, you want to work quickly. Your hands are going to get cold very fast. And right here, all I'm doing is I'm putting it in my stand mixer. I'm going to go ahead and add my my dry ingredients first. So this is my salt, my cures, my my pepper, uh, gochugaru, all that good stuff. Garlic, onion powder. Wow, it smells amazing. As this is mixing it, I'm going to go ahead and now dry my uh, add my wet ingredients. So my wet ingredients are going to be my fish sauce, you know, my gochujang, my shrimp paste. Those are the ingredients that are that are the liquid ingredients. I'm adding no extra water to this, and and really I'm just trying to keep the liquid ingredients to a minimum. Uh, you add too much water, or you add water, you're kind of defeating the purpose for a dried sausage. And now we're adding our starter culture. And so the starter culture is, is really about the maximum amount of water that I want to add. That's two tablespoons of water for every five pounds of meat uh, is what it comes down to. And, uh, and I've got my starter culture that's rehydrated for about 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. And as it's being incorporated, you're going to notice the, the actual texture of the meat is going to change. And it's going to go from what looks like regular ground pork to uh, to a very sticky, tacky substance. Uh, when you grab a little handful of it, it's going to be very sticky. It's going to stick to your hands. And usually in a stand mixer, between six to eight minutes is, uh, is roughly how long it takes. This is a, a sausage maker, 25 pound stuffer, and it's fantastic. And so today, this is an experiment for us. We're only going to be making about 15 pounds, 10 pounds of... Uh, of kimchi salami and I gotta tell you what I, after tasting it because you're gonna see what it looks like at the end I should have made more <laughs> I should have made more all right we're gonna go ahead and load our stuffer and uh, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm now trying to get myself into the habit of doing is actually stuffing a, 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 salt, a small sausage casing before I do my large sausage casings and so what, what this does is it gives me an opportunity to try the sausage out uh, about midway through the drying process Usually uh, a 60 millimeter sausage casing is going to take about eight, seven to eight weeks to dry. A 30 to 32 millimeter sausage casing is going to take about four weeks to dry. So if you want to try your sausage product out faster and see how it's coming out, then just use a smaller sausage casing. This is a natural sausage casing. The, the larger diameter is going to be a, a fiber, you know, a protein lined collagen casing. And so all we're doing is I just change the tip. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and load this thing on, and I'm only making one because really I want I want that larger 61 millimeter uh, salami, and so this is just really for me to be able to test it about four weeks into the process. As you can see, I've tied off one end. I'm going to poke holes right there so that the air can have an opportunity to escape as I'm loading it up. And you want this the minimum amount. You really don't want any air in there. And so sometimes it's inevitable, and you come back later and you poke it with that little pricker. But um, if you can avoid getting any air into the sausage itself, then you're already a step ahead of the game. Air is going to create spaces for unwanted bacteria and uneven drying and things like that. And so very slowly, I'm going to go ahead and just stuff this. This is probably about an 18-inch casing that I'm going to let to dry. And because it is a natural casing, I'm going to truss it up, although I didn't put it in the video, because I don't want it to rip while it's drying. If you're, if you're using a uh, synthetic casing, you don't have to truss it, and uh, you can just hang it in your drying chamber just as is. And so... You're going to see this right here. It's coming out nice and even. Everything's nice and firm. I'm trying to get it just tight enough to where... 
Uh, it, it's stuffing the casing as much as it can stuff without busting it. Natural casings you have to be quite careful with because uh, they're, they, they sort of rip fairly easy. And so you want to find that happy median. You can general, generally do it by feel. And if you feel it's tight enough, then you should be able to twist it without it ripping. Uh, and that's when, that's when you know it's just tight enough. And so at this point, I've just tied it off, set it to the side. I'm going to go ahead and use these synthetic casings. These were soaked for about 15 to 20 minutes. They don't need to be soaked very long. I got these from the sausage maker. That's the 61 millimeter salami casings. Same thing. I'm going to pop a couple holes right in the very end of it. And I'm only going to do one for you to see so that you can, uh, you can take a look at it. But I've, and notice I've also changed the tip on the sausage stuffer. I put the biggest one I had so that uh, it, it stuffs it very quickly with the minimum amount of air. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hold the end quite tightly and with reverse force, so I'm pulling against the way that it's stuffing, I'm allowing the, the mincemeat to push the casing through my hand. I'm also allowing the tip to remain within the mincemeat about an inch or so. And what that does is that actually forces any air to come out backwards. And by doing this, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of trouble later on down the road. But it's also going to give you a really nice, fully stuffed sausage, fully stuffed casing. This particular casing will fit anywhere from two and a half pounds to three and a half pounds of mince. And uh, once you got it fully stuffed, you're just going to tie it off. Once you're done stuffing your casings, take any of the force meat that you have remaining and put it in a piece of saran wrap, some, some cling film, and we're going to use this to test the pH later on. So this is going to sit alongside the salami while it's fermenting, and instead of breaking into our salami, we're going to break into this little mincemeat, and we should be able to test our pH from that without disrupting our, our salami. So that's going to be kind of cool. If, you, if you've watched any of our other videos, you're going to notice that making salami uh, isn't very complicated. There's a lot of steps, but the steps are uh, in a specific order, and they really don't change. And so if you follow each step, patience, work in a clean environment, you're going to have a really great product after it's all said and done. I've already separated that mince, wrapped it in cling film, Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and poke the salami. Uh, I'm doing a couple things. I'm checking for air pockets. Uh, if you've stuffed your salami correct, it should be quite firm, quite tight. You shouldn't have a whole lot of air pockets. Every once in a while, some will come up. You really want to check the ends because that's generally where some will form. And, um, and you want to poke your salami all the way through. This is going to help in the drying process. It's going to help it dry quite evenly. And so once you're done poking it, then you're going to weigh it. All right, and that's what we're going to do right now. So all you're doing is you're taking your wet salami. This is your green weight, and you're going to write that total down. All right. So what does that say? Fifteen hundred grams. I think it, if I if I can read it correctly, fifteen hundred grams. I'm writing that down, and I'm also writing my target weight. So for me, a good target weight is anywhere between thirty eight percent and forty two percent weight loss. So I jot that down and I write my target weight on there as well. So that way when I go through the process of weighing it, it's fairly easy to, to calculate and read. I don't have to break out a calculator every single time. And so, Okay, we're almost done. And we are about to apply the penicillium nalgiovensis. Now you can do this any number of ways. You can brush it on like I'm doing here. You can spray it on with a squirt bottle. You can even let your casings soak inside of a penicillium Nalgiovensis solution and that will inoculate them uh, quite well and quite efficiently. Okay, now it's time to ferment. Like I said before, we're going to ferment this at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And so fortunately, I can put it in, in my smoker. My smoker goes down to 80 degrees and all you really need is something that you can control the humidity and the temperature. And so what we're doing here is I put, a, put it in my smoker at 80 degrees and I've got a humidifier in there and uh, that's really all you need. My humidifier is going and my temperature is set to 80 and it's going to hang out there for roughly about 24 hours. So this particular batch, I did chorizo, kimchi, a ton of different types of salami, pepperoni I think I also did this time. And so that's just going to hang out there. And after 24 hours, you want to check the pH. If you want to check the pH sooner, 
depending on your salami and depending on your on your fermentation chamber, um, then I would check it roughly between 18 to 20 hours just to kind of get an idea. But what we're looking for, like I said, we're looking for a 4.8 pH. And um, if you have a pH tester, then it's going to basically do all the guesswork. It's going to eliminate the guesswork for you. But if you have pH strips, you want to make sure that you get the kind that are uh, that are within the you know the tenth of a decimal point. And it looks like there we are, 4.83 is our pH, and uh, we're good to go. Now we can go ahead and dry. And at this point, let's put it in the drying chamber. So this is what it's going to look like. It's going to hang in there for months. Uh, remember, I had that one salami. That is uh, 32, 34 millimeter casing. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. Your Penicillium nalgiavensis should grow quite rapidly in the first week, and um, and this is what it's going to look like. Now, if you used a smaller casing, it's going to be ready sooner. This is roughly about five weeks after it started, and uh, and I'm dying to try it out. This thing smells absolutely amazing. You know, originally when when I when we mixed the the seasonings together and it fermented. It smelled a little funky, I gotta, I gotta admit. And that fish sauce and that shrimp paste was, was quite pungent. But, uh, but now that it's dried, it's actually mellowed out quite a bit. I'm noticing that my outer edge is slightly drier than my inner, but I'm firm throughout. And so typically to, uh, to fix that, you're gonna vacuum seal your salami, pop it in the fridge for a week or two, and it's gonna equalize the water. It's gonna get rid of any of that uh, possible uneven dryness that you have. And this is also the tip. The tips are usually going to dry a lot faster than the centers. And so here, I'm going to go ahead and cut through it, give it a little look. I love the feel of it. It's got good sliceability. The color is quite amazing. It, it smells extraordinary. Uh, right now, you're getting that smoky gochu garu. You're getting that slightly spicy gochu jang. There's a garlic and an onion, a little bit of ginger thing going on. I like the 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 chives. You know, we put the dehydrated chives right inside of it, and um, they really you can start to smell a, a very nice oniony uh, fermented sausage. There's definitely uh, a kimchi element to it, and so you know it's hard to explain. But if you if you could imagine putting meat inside your kimchi. This is right on track with that. Uh, it's it's really holding together well. Uh, the fat to meat ratio is great. I think it was about 20%. And the, the bind is extraordinary. I do notice that there's a fun umami flavor coming through as I'm taking a bite of it. It's really a, it's really a, a deep sausage. There's a lot of depth to the flavor. Um, some ideas that you may want to use with this particular salami if you're making Korean food mix it in with whatever you're making you know obviously some some go-to ideas would be uh, uh, you know a kimchi fried rice with this Korean salami this would be a great match but if you're doing Korean barbecue this would be a great side or an add-on to have with that you could also chop it up and make it bigger slices and do some pan fries but ha have fun with it thanks a million for watching this video I hope that uh, I hope that you get an opportunity to make it be sure to click that link to subscribe because we've got some great videos and some great product reviews that I think you're going to love. See you later.